Hello, hello, my Panda Pals, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be covering what happened on Season 8, Episode 7 of Happily Ever After. Let's hurry up and get things started. Sit down, buckle up, and let's go for a ride. Let's start things off with Ashley and Manuel. Last episode, Manuel tries to get Ashley to go home without him so he can stay behind in New York City and have fun without her. It is a new day and the pair are headed out to meet Manuel's uncle. Ashley is super nervous because she has no idea who his family is because Manuel shares nothing with her. And she has no idea how much they know about her because, again, Manuel shares nothing with her. Manuel asks Ashley to please not bring up the fact that she is a witch and Ashley does not take this well. Manuel is wanting me to downplay my witchiness. Stop trying to tell me who to be, how to be, when to be, and what to be. Manuel tells her that she just has to be a good and nice person to his family. He tells us that Ashley is making this whole trip about her when in reality, it's about him and him reconnecting with his family that he has not seen in years. No estoy tratando de controlarla ni ocultarle nada, ni lugar ni el momento para decir a los demás que ella es una bruja. Look, I totally get it. You want everyone to get along with everyone. You want their first experience meeting each other to be as positive as possible so that when you do eventually break the news to them that Ashley is a witch, your family is way more receptive to it. I get it. But do not sit there and tell us that. Tell your wife that. Quiero que sea la primera y última. Quiero que haya muchas veces. Todo depende de ti, nada más. Todo depende de ti, Manuel. Okay. If you would just go and tell her exactly what you told us, I have a feeling that she would be way more amenable to your request. They meet up with Manuel's uncle, Leopolda. Espero que ya piense bien las cosas que va a decir. Ya una mujer cita muy grande para que aprenda a abrir la boca cuando es el momento. Well, that is certainly one way to say that. Another nicer way to say that would be that Ashley just knows how to read a room. Manuel's uncle tells us that he has been looking forward to meeting Ashley for such a long time, and he hopes that this is the first of many visits. Ashley tells him that she was super nervous to meet him because she really wants to get to know Manuel's family and be a part of their lives. Manuel was not joking about how religious he is. I was just, I'm... It's a lot. Ashley is a little taken aback by the reference to the Bible because Leopolda does continue to go on a little bit longer about religion, but Ashley is not in the business of being disrespectful, so she smiles and nods. Leopolda asks her if she is religious and she does stumble a bit before she tells him that she's spiritual and she focuses on helping people through astrology and tarot. Leopolda is like, like cards? No, 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 no. I only believe in God. And as long as you believe in God, we're all going to be okay. Yo creer en Dios, sí. Pero yo creer en mi espiritualidad, esos deities. Manuel goes on to cut the tension by saying everyone has their own beliefs, and Leopolda agrees, and Ashley agrees as well. Ashley tells us that she decided not to use the word witch because Leopolda said that he just wants them to be united as husband and wife, and she is not trying to look for a place to squeeze in another argument with Manuel. Gracias. Again, I love Ashley. I know that a lot of people do not like her, and I get it, she has a lot of problems, but who doesn't, right? All I can say is that she has such standout moments where she really shows such thoughtfulness and empathy. Also, additional side note, I found out that Ashley and Manuel recently visited my local Apple store, and I was so upset that, like, I could have met them. I, well, I mean, I couldn't actually meet them because I have some deep-rooted trauma linked to the Apple Store. I would only step into one if my dog's life depended on it. But still, I am bummed that I could have met them, but I didn't. The sun has set and the pair meet up with Ashley's spiritual colleague, Aaron. Aaron uses the form of language to connect with galactic beings, angelic beings, and aliens, honey. Erin starts conversation by saying she recently heard of an uptick in UFO sightings in Ecuador, which Manuel says he has heard about, but he doesn't really believe in aliens, so like, whatever. Erin says she's feeling some galactic vibes and asks the two if they are open to receiving them. And Manuel is like, what does that even mean? I am gonna work with light language that I will channel and pull through from the angelic realm. Listen, I don't want to be disrespectful, but this sounds 
absolutely Looney Tunes. This kind of reminds me of that old show, Psych. I've recently been rewatching it, which is why it's in the forefront of my mind. The protagonist of that show is hyper observant and very skilled at deductive reasoning. So he's able to make people around him believe that he is a psychic. Maybe Aaron is skilled at active listening and is a strong empathic communicator. I just feel like, listen, if angels are real, if there are people on this earth that are gifted enough to be able to commune with them, it's not gonna be Ashley's bestie, you know? Anyway, she has them do some stuff and close their eyes as she starts to channel this light language. Listen, I don't know, could she be speaking some kind of angelic language? Sure. But do I think that she's actually saying just a bunch of nonsense and then the receiver is left to interpret out of it what they need to hear from it? Yes. She goes on to say that energetically, she can tell that they are connected on a spiritual level, but they definitely have issues with communication and they need to stabilize their trust. And yeah, she's right. But again, anyone who took a cursory glance at any one of their segments on this show could have gleaned that. Somehow, Manuel and Ashley turn this experience into an argument because Manuel says that he's always honest and transparent with Ashley and trusts her 100%, but she does not reciprocate any of that back to him. And the fault is not of the man, but of her. Yeah, okay, I understand. I'm going to scream. Okay. I'm not even going to translate what he said. Woo, the angels have left the room. And so has Ashley, because she does not appreciate the narrative that Manuel is making up right now. Moving on to Emily and Kobe. Last episode, Emily tries to show Kobe's friends that she is a good time, and Valerie just keeps speaking to her disrespectfully and calling her bossy. Emily storms away and Kobe's friends are all genuinely confused and ask him, why is she so angry, Kobe? All we did was criticize every choice she's made since she got here and then incessantly pointed out how these choices show us that she's gonna be a terrible wife and then proceed to call her bossy nonstop and then not let her get a word in edgewise to defend herself. I don't get it. Kobe tells his friends that they need to calm the F down. Emily is his wife, they have two kids and they are here to have fun. Kobe tries to get Emily to come back to the table, saying that his friends are expressing their views as African men and basically to pay them no mind. Emily tells him that she can't just go back there to the table and pretend everything is good because his friends are being very disrespectful towards her. I really do think his friends are trying to sabotage our relationship, but you know, I want them to accept me so they can come to the wedding and we can all be happy. Kobe assures Emily that he has talked to his friends, he loves her and is always gonna be on her side, and he's able to convince Emily to come back to the table. Valerie tries to make peace by basically explaining where he's coming from. You can come over, we know that when a man talks, a woman sit quiet. You have to learn, it's not correct. If you continue to do that, all the friends of Kobe will say you are bossy. Emily goes ahead and pours herself a glass of whiskey to try and drown out the absolute audacity of some of these men. One of Kobe's friends, whose brain cells actually came to work today, says that they are clearly from two different cultures and it's about blending the two together and not about one dominating the other. Kobe tries to get them all to wave some white flags by reiterating that they are here to have fun together, but Valerie says that Kobe's not making any sense and he's clearly just doing this to cover for his wife. It's your wife. To me, it's strange. Like, I don't know how the show look like. Are you guys gonna maintain this? Like, seriously? Emily tells Kobe that this is exactly why she questioned whether his friends should come to their wedding or not because clearly they are never going to approve of her. If you feel like our relationship is not worthy, then I don't think you should show up on our wedding. Kobe and Emily get up to leave and his friends cause an uproar trying to get him to come back, but Kobe does stick to his decision. He thanks them and they head out. Wow, kudos for Kobe. I honestly did not think he was going to do that, but he stood up to his friends when he needed to. Moving on to Mahmoud and Nicole. Last episode, Nicole loses her absolute shit, along with her last two brain cells as Mahmoud packs up his things and leaves. Nicole tasks Julian with trying to shepherd Mahmoud back home. All right, can we just, can we sit down? Can we sit down, Mahmoud? As much as I'm annoyed that Julian has been interjecting himself into situations that have nothing to do with him, I do actually think that in this particular instance, it was a good idea for him to intervene. Mahmoud tells us that Nicole has sincerely told him to basically f off twice now, so he just wanted to leave and find somewhere else to stay for the night. Julian tells him that he can walk around to clear his head, but just not to go too far. 
Julian is crying at this point, and honestly, <laughs> I would probably be crying too. Your friend's marriage crumbled right before your eyes, and now you gotta chase the husband who you've never met before, and now it's your responsibility to bring him back home? I think not. Nicole is back home with Olga and Leslie, and she says that she's sorry and embarrassed that they had to see that, as if she did not instigate everything that transpired that evening. I really regret saying anything to him when we got back, and I feel terrible about it. Mm, her mouth and face are saying two very different things. This b is not sorry. Do you want to know how I know? Nicole goes on to call Mahmoud and instead of saying, I'm sorry, please come back so that you can have a conversation with one of my other personalities. She says, what are you going to do? Where are you even going to go? Just come back home. Mahmoud tells her that he's going to stay at a hotel and Nicole is like, I'm so worried. It's late. He doesn't know anything about LA and I don't know how much money he has. I mean... Maybe you shouldn't have made every effort to make him feel unwelcome and then go on to call him a hateful f and then tell him to get out. Just saying. With that, production does go ahead and drive Mahmoud to a hotel where he stays for the night. It is a new day and Mahmoud is wandering around LA confused and distraught. Why Nicole act like that? Are she afraid like I change her life here or she lose that because she don't love me anymore? I don't know. He gives Nicole a call and tells her that he's super sad about how everything went down yesterday. And Nicole basically says she did it because she was mad at him. For the last three days, you've done nothing but cause problems. And you know what else? For the last four years, that's all you've done, actually. I am not saying that Mahmoud is a field of daisies, but Nicole is saying that he has caused nothing but problems since he got here. But all of the problems that she is referencing, they were instigated by things that she made up in her imagination. Anyway, Mahmoud is very defeated after this conversation and he tells Nicole that he just wants to come by and pick up his things. Nicole tells us that Mahmoud left with his cell phone and her credit card and then proceeded to spend 300 of her dollars for a hotel room and that now she feels super disrespected. He told you he tried to use his money, but that they wouldn't accept it, which I completely agree because he is a foreigner. Also, you called him a hateful f and told him to get out of your house. How are you feeling disrespected right now? I talked to Mahmoud and it didn't go well. I'm hoping that maybe the conversation goes better in person. I mean, is he gonna have the conversation with someone who is not you? If not, then that conversation is gonna go exactly the same way it just went on that phone call two seconds ago, you insane person. Mahmoud arrives and things are super tense, super awkward, super stiff. Nicole is not apologizing. Mahmoud is not apologizing. And so Mahmoud just heads off to pack up his things. And Nicole is like, it's clear he has no desire to fix things. Like, he tried to call you an hour ago to say that he was really sad about how things went last night. And you told him that he's ruining your life. The f are you even talking about right now? Mahmoud gives her back her credit card, $300 in cash, and then puts on his shoes to leave. Nicole is like, well, where are you going to go? And he's like, I'm going to find a hotel. And she's like, oh, oh, you're going to find a hotel three days in LA and you're suddenly a native. And then Mahmoud is like, dude, you told me to leave. And she's like, yeah, but then I told you to stay. And he's like, dude, after the way you treated me in front of your friends, you think I'm really going to stay? You're the one who told me you wanted to get a Divorce like 20 yeah, times yeah, today, yes. yesterday. And they still want that. Then go. Then yes, yeah, go, 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 go. Mahmoud says he loves her, but he cannot do this anymore. He has no plan, no phone, and no idea how he's going to get back to Egypt. But go back to Egypt, he will, and he will never come back. And that, my panda pals, is all I've got for you today. I hope you guys had a good time on the ride. I hope to see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for not letting me ride this train wreck alone. Bye.